Steve Jobs. When I wasn't sure what the word charisma meant, I met Steve Jobs and then I knew. He wanted you to be great. And he wanted you to create something that was great. And he was going to make you do that. And I'm also one of these people that I, I don't really care about being right, you know. I just care about success. It all began in 1971 in Palo Alto, just south of San Francisco, when Xerox, the copier company, set up the Palo Alto Research Center, or PARC. Xerox management had a sinking feeling that if people started reading computer screens instead of paper, Xerox was in trouble unless they could dominate the paperless office of the future. The management said, go create the new world. We don't understand it. Here are people who have a lot of ideas and tremendous talent, young, energetic. What's the mail this morning? This promotional film made in the mid-70s to flaunt Xerox Park research shows just how revolutionary the Alto was. It was friendly and intuitive. This is an experimental office system. It's in use now. It had the first GUI using a mouse to point to information on the screen. It was linked to other PCs by a system called Ethernet, the first computer network. And what you saw on the screen was precisely what you got on your laser printer. It was way ahead of its time. Thank you, Fred. At the height of Apple's early success in December 1979, Jobs, then all of 24, had a privileged invitation to visit Xerox Park. And they showed me really uh, three things. But I was so blinded by the first one that I didn't even really see the other two. Uh, one of the things they showed me was object-oriented programming. They showed me that, but I didn't even see that. The other one they showed me was really a networked computer system. They had over 100 Alto computers, all networked, using email, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't even see that. I was so blinded by the first thing they showed me, which was the graphical user interface. I thought it was the best thing I'd ever seen in my life. The mouse is a pointing device that moves a cursor around the display screen. Adele and her colleagues showed the Apple programmers an Alto machine running a graphical user interface. A selected window displays above other windows, much like placing a piece of paper on top of a stack on a desk. And within, you know, 10 minutes, it was obvious to me that all computers would work like this someday. It was a turning point. Jobs decided this was the way forward for Apple. After an hour looking at demos, they understood our technology and what it meant more than any Xerox executive understood it after years of showing it to them. The brilliant researchers at Park could never persuade Xerox management that their vision was accurate. Head office in New York ignored the revolutionary technologies they owned 3,000 miles away. They just didn't get it. Basically, they were copier heads that just had no clue about uh, a computer or what it could do. And so they, they just grabbed, uh, grabbed defeat from the greatest victory in the computer industry. Xerox could have owned the entire computer industry today. Um, could have been, you know, a company ten times its size. Could have been IBM. Could have been the IBM of the 90s. Could have been the Microsoft of the 90s. For Steve Jobs, the road to Damascus passed through Palo Alto. He persuaded the Apple board to invest in technology copying what he'd seen at Xerox Park. And so I formed a small team to do the Macintosh. And, you know, we, th we were on a mission from God. With one win, one resolve, one cause. The Macintosh was undoubtedly the first affordable personal computer with a genuine graphical user interface. Many of us have been working on Macintosh for over two years now, and it has turned out insanely great. So it is with considerable pride that I introduce a man who's been like a father to me, Steve Jobs. Uh, 
I was standing off stage, and as he came off, uh, he said, this is, you know, the proudest, happiest moment of my life. And it was all over his face. It clearly was, because um, he had launched a revolution. It comes down to trying to expose yourself to the best things that humans have done, and then try to bring those things in to what you're doing. I mean, Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. And we have, you know, always been shameless about stealing great ideas. Um, and I think part of what made the Macintosh great was that the people working on it were musicians and poets and artists and zoologists and historians who also happened to be the best computer scientists in the world.